approach to it as part of it. When you're preparing players, and maybe even just new players who haven't been part of this, how do you describe this rivalry in a way that maybe people from the outside don't really understand? I think it's just really just a tradition. I mean, you got two great organizations. Um, I think two organizations that pride themselves on um, you know, winning football, playing really physical, and um, really no matter what the circumstances, um, going out there playing the best uh, football possible. So you just tell them that um, you're going against a, a, another team that kind of thinks the way we think, you know, from a standpoint of, you know, we want to come in no matter who we got on our squad. We're going to come in, compete at the highest level, and it's going to be a physical football game. In past what? years, there were guys on either side would talk. I mean, they would use the word hate when talking about yeah. each other. I mean, like Sugg, Suggs would say, you know, they, they wanted to kill Hines Ward. I mean, yeah. Do you feel like that's not really there the way that it maybe was? in past generations? I wouldn't say that. I just think you probably just can't say it out loud. Like <laughs> you know, um, you know, definitely. So I think that though, those still, the, the rivalry is still, is still there. You know, obviously, um, you know, back then, I feel like they played a lot, they played a lot more when the stakes were higher. But I think this year, I mean, this, this game right here for Sunday is going to be for first place in the division. So I think it's been a while uh, that this game has actually, you know, had the stakes this high in a long time. But I mean, we know how they feel about us. We know how we feel about, they know how we feel about them. Um, it's respect at the end of the day, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Zach, um, John mentioned earlier this week, turning over every stone to try to find a fix for the defensive issues in the middle of the field or a pass defense. What's this week been like for you in trying to kind of, I mean, you get a big win, but obviously I imagine there's a lot of luck fix. Oh, was a, I mean, two. We had the weekend, we was up here, you know, coach, especially, uh, you know, uh, coach, uh, Harbs and the defensive coaches, uh, we were in, man, just trying to go back through from day one, just all our teach tapes, all our um, coverage slides and just see what details that, that might have got might have got missed or what details might need to tweak. Um, you know, every year is different. So doing that um, and grinding, got in with the players, had a real good film session starting on Tuesday. And then uh, really just looking at everything, man. Looking at what we're calling, what we're running. Look at uh, what we're asking the guys to execute, and just trying to figure out the best way to, to go out there and put the best product on the field. So um, it's definitely been a, a work in progress. Not just this past week, but I feel like this week is really you know amped up because you know time is clicking. You know, with the truth be told, it's only, it's only seven weeks left in the season, and um, things are not where they where they need to be at. Um, you know, for especially in the past uh, past defense area. So uh, we, we've been working hard, coaches and players, to try to get this thing figured out. So I see Kyle, Kyle back out there today. Just how optimistic are you guys for the ability on time? Shoot, man, um, I'm optimistic. It was good to see him out here, you know, so I'm going to continue to hold uh, hope out. It'll be a big boost if he's out there for a Sunday. Obviously, we know what uh, K-Ham means to us. So I'm, I'm, you know, I hope to see him out there Sunday. Hey, Zach, after the game the other day, Marlon Humphrey was – candid and kind of self-critical about everything with the pass defense. How, is, how have you seen your approach with him this week? How, has he specifically approached you, or what's the relationship there been, especially this week? Yeah, I mean, the relationship is great. Me and Marlo got a great relationship, so uh, we've had conversations right after the game, day after the game, um, leading up through all the, uh, you know, up to now. And then I'm pretty sure the conversation will continue to happen, but uh, Marlo, I mean, he, he's, been, he's been himself, man. He's always been a leader. Um, you know, he's been here. He's the longest tenured Raven on our defense. And um, he, he, he knows what the standard is. And obviously, we, we've fallen short of the standard multiple times this year. So, um, you know, he's, he's just like we talked about as coaches, we're leaving, you know, no stone unturned. Um, he's doing that, and the players are doing that as well. So, um, you know, seeing great leadership out of Marlon. Um, he's, he's had a heck of a practice, heck of a practice week. Um, he's going hard. He's leading the way by, more by example. But, um, you know, when he, when he speaks up, you know, everybody's listening. So I'm, I'm proud of you know, how he's leading us and trying to get this thing turned around. Zach, today. Zach, he talked particularly about feeling like there was a disconnect between what happens during the week and then maybe what happens on Sunday. How do you address that in particular? You know, maybe feeling like everything is exactly where you want it on Friday, mm -hmm. but then maybe it isn't two, day, two days later. How do, you, how do you go with that? Yeah, I think the film session that we had, is, it was just real good. It was just, you know, holding each other accountable and, um, mm -hmm. you know, having an open, open forum conversation, you know, what is it? What is the problem that when we go out there on game day, and it's not all the time, but certain plays that we feel like we covered, 
or whatever the case may be, may not be getting you know done the way it needs to get done. And it's a combination of things. It is not just it's not just them. I asked them, what can I do better? Maybe I can you know cut out some things or whatever to, to make us lock in and focus better. So just open forum, open discussion, and uh, that's what I think we continue to try to find and chase. So I'm excited. We we done some stuff this week. I'm excited to see. Uh, it come to fruition on Sunday. Yeah, it, it seems like Nate Wiggins has, has played several good games in a row here, really kind of stacking. Where where have you seen him make strides, and do you feel like he could be a guy that sees even more action? Yeah, I mean, um, he, he's, he's getting better. I think i just seen um, him more locked in on his technique and, and fundamentals. He's always had good technique and fundamentals, but, um, you know, this National Football League, I think he recognized early on that, can't take you can't lax for one second you can't lax for one play because as soon as you lax that's what happens when you know you get beat so um, he's kinda, he's done a heck of a job coming in working his butt off at practice and it's been translating to the game Zach, with Trenton, oh, uh, with, with Trenton he's played like 90 percent of the snaps the past three weeks you know where have you seen him grow the most this season you know in his first year as a starter um yeah man just understanding um offenses schemes where there's blocking or route concepts um he's done a good job he's a hard worker like i've always stated and uh that, with him just with a lot of these young guys just experience man he just need experience to get out there get adjusted to the game speed and to uh to put himself in better positions and that's what he's done so he's continuing to get better every week uh week by week and we're pleased where he's at right now that film session that you mentioned, was that something, is that something you always do or was that kind of something to take stock of where you are at, at this point of the season? Oh, no, it's something that we always do, but it was, it was, it was, um, it was real good. I, I'll, say, I'll say that. It was a real good conversation. Yeah. Zach, I hate to say this because you didn't want it, but when you left the stadium late Thursday night, how were you, were you was frustration high with you? Yeah, I was, I, I, I mean, I was, I was crushed, honestly. I felt the same way that our players felt. I felt the same way Marlon felt. And, um, you know, People trying to, you know, people tell us, you know, good family, friends, uh, people around the building, on staff saying we got to enjoy the win, which I'm grateful for the win. We, we honestly, as a defense, we did we did enough to win that game, even though it was by the skin of the teeth. We did enough to win the game, so enjoyed it for two seconds. But man, we we got in this building, man, the standard is so is, is high, and that's what that's what we like. I know I like that. I'm a competitive person, but in defense, we have high expectations for ourselves, and we're real competitive. And when we don't go out there and perform the way that we, we feel like we should go perform, it, it hurts. And, um, you know, I was, you know, I was, I was hurt, man, honestly. So um, it took me a couple of days to, 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 you know, get over that and move forward. But um, yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm always great for the win. That's the number one thing. If we win, I'm gonna be good, but I always gotta look at how we perform on defense. And if it's not up to the standard, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna be happy too long after I celebrate the win. Is that, is that a new feeling for you as when you were a player? Did you have games that, you or your unit or your defense played poorly but got a win? And how did you handle it then versus how, how do you manage that now as a coach? Uh, no, nah, me, me personally, I always been like, <clears throat> always like real self-critical of myself. And so um, even as a player, if we, if we won the game, I feel like I didn't play good. So I, I, I feel bad, you know. So uh, um, as, as a coach, you got to kind of just, you know, I still share, I still uh, share those same emotions. But as a coach, you know, you got to kind of, um, you know, figure out and, and get yourself together and really understand the big picture of what needs to happen. Because um, as a coach, you naturally are in the leadership position and, you know, players and other people around the building are going to see how you're going to respond. So I think it's good to, to, that they see your natural uh, raw emotions, but then, you know, how are you going to respond? And we always talk about how you're going to respond. So um, I always look at it like as a coach, how I'm going to respond. Am I going to sit there and pout and soak or I'm going to, figure out and do something about it and try to continue to work and get better. So I think uh, we continue to do the latter. I think that, that leads by example in a good way. Uh, how, soon more, you, how soon were you back here in the office after after that Thursday night game? I was there uh, next morning. <laughs> next morning, next morning. Didn't sleep much, didn't sleep much, but I was here the next morning. So. Zach, how do you Zach. envision Tredavious White fitting into your defense? I know he just got here last week, but how do you envision his role? Man, he, he's, done a, he's done a good job. I mean, honestly, I've been surprised how – you know, fast he's picked up the uh, the playbook and, and the language and the terminology. I mean, obviously he's been a he's been an All Pro player. He's been a, a savvy player, a smart player. We we've known that about him for a long time. But I was really impressed with him. He came in came in what Monday maybe and got it got in with our DB coaches and grinded out the playbook. And uh, he's got he come out here done a good day of practice. Like I think every day of practice he's gotten better and better. So like today was real good. So um, shoot, we'll we'll see Sunday. I have, I have full confidence in him if he has to go out there. And, Go out there and play good ball for us. So, One more with Jonas. Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen from George Pickens, especially with his partnership with, with 
with Russell Wilson and I guess how dangerous of a downfield threat has it become in this kind of new iteration of the offense? Oh, it's real dangerous. I mean, he's been dangerous downfield threat um, since he's came into the league. We know that as a rookie. I think he has the unique and uh, crazy ability to judge the ball no matter where it's at and then come down with it and get his feet in bounds and make these acrobatic catches. And then um, Russ has always been a threat with his deep ball throwing. So now you add those two guys together, shoot, it's, it's, it's explosiveness, it's dynamite. And um, we know that the ball is going, regardless of the coverage, regardless where you're at, you can be, you can be on them. The ball is going to go up to them um, at some point in time. And we're going to have to make those plays if we want to come out with a win on uh, Sunday. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Thanks Zach. Zach. Yeah. Appreciate you.